nice because this is how uh, test-driven development uh, works. We just define two tests uh, that are not yet implemented in the code. And so uh, that's how test-driven development works. You write tests before you write the code. And then you launch the test, you see them all fail, you just implement something, launch the tests again, and you verify that uh, some tests start to, to work. And it's, it's something very, very effective, I think, more for a psychological reason, because it's, it sort of became, becomes a game. Okay? So you have, oh, I, uh, and, and you see progress as you, as you, as you do it. So we, we, you start, you have uh, uh, 10 tests all failing because you haven't started implementing. Then you implement a function, you launch them again, nine tests. OK, another function, nine tests. Oh, I got something wrong, and so on. So this is it. Uh, I think it's enough for doc tests. Um, there are a lot of options and stuff. But if you have questions about it before me, we move on, Did you already know about doc test? No. It's it's a bit it's a bit neglected. I don't know why. Of course, um, unit test, which we'll say right now, <laughs> is mm, maybe more pure. But uh, I really like doc test for writing. You you can use them both, and it's very convenient having uh, having something you can use both for tests and documentation and. It will be, uh, you know, it will be good to use it just because it uh, tests that your documentation is in sync with your code. That feature alone is a killer for me. But let's move. Oh yes, sorry. Maybe my question is too specific, but do you know how could you integrate PyTest with doc tests? Because I tried. Uh, I don't use py. Uh, you mean py dot tests? Py dot tests. Uh, I don't use pi.test actually, I used, uh, but I'll, I'll show you how to integrate it with nodes. Uh, actually, we, we'll see nodes is very good for uh, keeping stuff together from doc test and unit test. But I think pi.test, I just came to the documentation, should have something. I'm quite sure it does if, if, if nodes does it, pi.test should do it. OK, so yes, it's including batteries, which is good because it will work everywhere uh, where Python works. It's very convenient because you are doing documentation, blah, 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 blah. You can do it either in text files or in doc strings inside your code. Usually, it will be a mix of both. I, I find that when I'm starting to a new project, a new class, I like to write a story in a, set, in a text file. This is, high, this is how I would like it to work in the future. So I just write some documentation, uh, put some console stuff, and then I integrate in the, in, in the code as doc strings as, as I, this is the way. You can use either. It's tightly, it's tightly integrated in Python because it, it, it integrates with doc strings and with PyDoc, so it, it's, it's all, it all fits nicely and, and very easily. You have mm, testable documentation, but you always must be a bit careful about what you're doing because it's in the end it's just text matching. So, uh, like the first uh, weird mistake we've seen, it was just because there was a space after the expected value uh, because seven space is not the same as seven. Okay, so we will go on to um, what's the time? OK, we just have 20 minutes, but we before, right before the coffee break. Yeah, yeah. But we, we, can, we can go on later. Uh, the most, the, you know, the, the most maybe famous uh, testing model in Python is unit test. It's included in batteries since, I think, Python 2.45, maybe. It uh, used to be an external module called PyUnit because it was based on a similar model in Java, which was JUnit, which on its turn was based 
on previous work on Smalltalk. In general, this kind of library is called XUnit because it's uh, there for a lot of language. There's CPP unit for CPP and so on and so forth. And they all work the same, which is good because once you learn it in Python, you can use it in Java, of course, with language differences. But for on another hand, it's, it's not uh, as cool as Doctest because Doctest is, is is born with Python and it shows. And the unit test is a bit more formal, but we'll see how it works. So uh, the main concept here, like the name of the library say, is unit test. Uh, so what is a unit? What? Yes, the unit is, a, is an independent piece of code. So we could, for example, consider uh, this a unit, maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's see how it works first. I'll delete that doxing because it makes everything to. Okay. So it's in the batteries, so you can just import unit test. You have to define a class. Okay. This is called a test case. A test case is uh, a collection of tests. In unit uh, using unit test by unit, a test case is a class, and tests are methods. Okay. Uh, before doing our factorial example, let's uh, I, I'll show you another file, and we'll start with the basic. With <coughs> not that the factorial example is not basic, but more basic than that. Uh, let's call it. Simple, simple unit test. Okay. So, okay. So we define a method. And the way that unit test works is with assertions. Uh, do you know the assert command in the assert statement in Python? Do you? Assert 1 is equal to 0. It's just a nifty little tool that uh, uh, you can use in your code to, to, to check if something is in some way. OK, assert, of course, this would work. If it doesn't, it just raises a assertion error. It would seem, on uh, first sight, a good, uh, a good way to do our test, but actually it's not, and later we'll see why. Actually, it's a terrible way because of technical limitations. So, um, but the core of the idea is that you can assert a condition, and if uh, the condition is true, everything goes well, the test passes if the condition is false, uh, the test fails. So self assert. This is uh, comes from the test case. We are just uh, subclassing test case, so we had this in the superclass. As you can see, we are not using the assert statement in Python, but uh, those custom methods. Yes, of course, slightly misleading. Uh, we're not testing actual code here. We're just uh, seeing how the basic of work. So this is a test that, that hopefully uh, will go well. We are saying uh, true should be true. Hopefully it will be. On the other hand, this test 
should um, fail. Again, this is the condition we are setting. So when we will launch the test, it will check that true is false. Let's try it right away. Uh, I think it's my... I usually launch this stuff through nose, as, it, as you'll see. OK. So it's, it's very similar to the doc test, dot test mode. Unit test has this main function that will launch things. So let's see what it said. Let's do it again. You can see the first line is very interesting because you, you, we have a character for each one of the tests. It's more, much more convenient an output than that of doc test than does nothing if, if, we, uh, if the test mm, passes, uh, unless we use options. So the test fair, uh, notice, first of all, that the tests weren't called in the same order we defined it test fail was called because test true, yeah, before test true, sorry. And uh, well, it's very simple actually, because unit test just calls the test in alphabetical order. That shouldn't be a problem, because if you're doing unit test right, the, the units you're testing and the tests must be absolutely independent one from another. We'll see after the coffee break, we have tools and techniques to make sure that they're independent because we, we, we just, the key is that with unit tests, each test have to test a behavior. The unit of code is a behavior which could be a function or much less on, or much more. Uh, for example, here in, factor, in factorial, which is a single function, we have a lot of behaviors we want to test. We want to test its behavior in boundary cases. So we, we would have a test just for zero case. We should test that it fails with strings, and that will be a different test against a behavior, not a function. OK. And so we've seen a test uh, going well, a test failing, but there's a third possible outcome. <coughs> which is the error, which is different by, from a failing test. And uh, it, it's just something that happens when an exception is raised in the test itself. OK, so. Yeah, so, sure. I just want to show you what happens when this is another assert uh, there are a lot of them we'll see some of those uh, after the coffee break This, of course, say, says the first par parameter should be equal to the second. Uh, <coughs> I just wanted to show you what happens when everything goes well. Never in my experience, but it's very... But anyway, when you have a string of tests that go well, you just have a dot for each one. 
in the end, it gives you the number of tests and the total execution time, which are two important parameters. Uh, first of all, the, the number of tests makes sense, which it does not in doc test because uh, doc test mm, just considers every single statement, even if it's an import or anything, like a test. So we, if we define a, um, a function of three, uh, three lines for doc test, that would be three tests which is not the same way we, we would like to think about it because for us we're testing a function. And uh, in unit tests it's like that. It, the tests are, tests are just uh, the, the methods, uh, so they are counted that way. And after the coffee break we'll see uh, definitely something more, but since there are few minutes left, I'll show you something. On a lighter, on a lighter. Um, it's very important, in general, that you always keep track of the defect bugs you find. Even if, and especially if you, so, if, if you fix them right away, you, the, the single most important uh, suggestion I could give to a novice programmer would be to use some kind, every kind of, uh, you know, bug keeping you could use track, but even an Excel, and uh, even an Excel file would, will do, a text file. Just keep track of everything. Why? Uh, because I, I know you won't probably find this in most uh, software testing handbooks, but it's true. Uh, software bugs are pre pretty much like Batman villains. How so? You know, Batman doesn't kill, so he just uh, will capture the Joker or his villain and put it in prison. Of course, the Joker being, being very resourceful, he will find a way out and co start to cause trouble again. The same villain, trouble again. And so I think you, you, you know where I want to go. And don't be like the Batman. I, don't, I didn't think I would have given this suggestion, but don't be like the Batman. Each time you find a bug, consider it will probably uh, come again in the future. Why? Because maybe uh, you just implement uh, uh, something, then solve a bug, then your colleague finds uh, a, a, a much worse bug in, in the code and reverses it, or so you just make the same logic, logic mistake again. After so, as soon as you find a bug, you write a test that fails when the bug is, is found, and uh, so you will be pretty sure uh, that if the bug comes back in the future, you will catch it right away. And if you have to, 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 to keep your bug reports database, just rem remember to, to, to write these three things, especially if you work with others, but even if you work with yourself, because uh, especially the, you know, the, the second one seems silly, but it's not so stupid, especially for someone who is not working uh, with your code daily, that means you in a month. Uh, okay, so when uh, the bug is when you launch this, uh, a type error is raised. Uh, why? What should happen instead? Maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, a key error? You, you can't be sure you will, you will remember or others will know it, so just write it down. <coughs> and uh, the, rep the reproduction steps are very important. If you have those three elements and and a bug database, uh, your life as a programmer, even as an independent programmer, will be much, much, much easier. This is the second suggestion I would give. The first one is just to somewhere to keep your code safe. Subversion, Mercurial, uh, Git, CVS, no, not CVS, but <laughs> just, just something, because you, you, you must have even if you, you don't plan for disasters, and you should, uh, you just want to have a trust. You can change your code and go back uh, to uh, some given point in the past where it worked. Um, 
you sh should try to, to, to destroy all barriers between you and your will to change something because you oh no but it will break and I it will never work again so yes that was a bit of an intermission but I didn't want to load you for the last minute uh, with more important stuff so we I think it's coffee break time we will see in uh, 45 minutes 45 minutes 40 if you wish if yeah, you yeah it's okay it can be 30 minutes uh, as you, as you no I think 45, 45 minutes is okay. okay 45 minutes and we'll see something more about unit tests then we will go on to most interesting stuff most fun stuff okay.